In this video, I'm going to look through Tesla's most recent 10Q financial statement. Now, publicly traded companies need to file quarterly and annual financial statements, and these figures are available for all to see. It's how we look into the company's performance. And so I'm going to look into one of the most interesting companies in the world today, Tesla. So let's get right into it. This is its uh, 10Q for the period ending June 30th. Okay, so this was announced a little bit after June 30th, but it's for the period that ended June 30th. And you can notice here that they give you a nice uh, table of contents here. The total document is about 60 pages but we're not going to go through all 60 pages that would require a much longer video I'm just going to look at a few key figures and the figures that don't require much of a financial background to understand I'm not going to go into complex and advanced topics here I'm going to keep it simple I'm going to just look at a few of the um, more uh, uh, straightforward figures and straightforward things in their statement and so here's one of them let's start with this which is Tesla's balance sheet this is where the company shows how much cash it has how much debt it has and where those figures are spread out and I always like to look at a company's balance sheet just to look at how much cash it has and how much long-term debt to determine its its viability and, and how much of a burden its debt payments are. And if for Tesla, it's got 18.3 billion in cash as of June 30th, and not very much long-term debt, only about 4 billion long-term debt. So its cash to debt balance is favorable, not, not a burden. Uh, but what is interesting here, I will note, is that Tesla, if you recall, in 2021 they made a big announcement and they made a splash on the financial scene by by buying uh, over one billion dollars in digital currencies uh, Bitcoin Dogecoin and maybe a few others and but what they did in this current quarter in the quarter that ended June 30th they sold a lot of that Tesla sold a lot of its cryptocurrencies and you notice here it's digital assets right here if you compare between from December 31 to June 30th, their digital assets fell from 1.26 billion down to 218 uh, million. So I thought that was interesting that they sold a lot of their cryptocurrencies and they're holding only a fraction. In fact, later on we'll see that they sold 75% of their cryptocurrencies. So a solid balance sheet, but another thing to note here is that the rising inventory, they had 8.1 billion in inventory, that's up from 5.7 billion in December 31, 2021. That's another thing to keep in mind. We'll get more detail on that further down into the financial statement. So let's move on here. Looking at its income statement, this is where you will see its revenue, its expenses, and its net profit. And for Tesla, excellent, excellent revenue growth, right? Uh, they reported $14.6 billion in revenue growth and the, in the three months ended June 30th. That was up from $10.2 billion in the same quarter last year. And I like to see the majority of that was driven by growth in its automate, automotive sales, 13.7 billion up from 9.5 billion. And then another important figure is the cost of revenues. Of course, inflation is widespread and ev nearly every business in the world is feeling the impacts. And Tesla is no exception. Their cost of revenues rose to 10.15 billion from 7.1 billion. So their cost of revenues rose by about 3 billion. But what's good here is that their revenues overall rose by 4.2 billion. So revenues rose more than cost did. And so that led to an increase in gross profit, which which increased to 4.2 billion up from 2.9 billion. 
So excellent, excellent performance here from Tesla in the recent quarter, in its most recent quarter, despite these challenges. And that led to net income soaring to 2.2 billion, up from 1.2 billion. Investors in Tesla stock can be encouraged by that performance. Moving along here to its cash flow statement, and this is uh, arguably one of the more important of the three financial statements, right? From the income, the balance sheet, the cash flow. This is where you can tell as an investor if a company is delivering the goods, what I like to say. Because, you know, it can make sales if it tells customers, hey, you don't have to pay me for three months, six months, nine months. If it gives you favorable credit terms, it will help in making sales. But then in, when you look at the cash flow statement, you'll notice that they're not generating cash because they're selling all a lot of these vehicles on credit. But that's not the case for Tesla. We see here their cash, their cash flow from operating activities were 6.35 billion. And that was a significant increase from the same period last year where it was only 3.76 billion so solid growth in terms of cash flows from operating activities and so investors can feel confident that these increases were come what well, the increases in sales are indeed leading to increases in cash flow another interesting uh story that these figures tell is tesla's um dabble into cryptocurrencies we see here last time uh, last year, 2021, in the six months and the June 30, they spent 1.5 billion in, for purchasing digital assets, uh, in other words, for cryptocurrencies. And in the six months this year, they've sold 936 million in digital currencies. Now, it's hard to determine how much money they lost and how much money they're going to lose from the purchases, but for the most part, cryptocurrency prices are significantly lower than they were in 2021. So it appears that they, um, as far as timing these investments, they were not very effective in the timing of it. Buying at the highest prices of 2021 and now selling when prices were crashing in 2022. If you watched my other video where I discussed the conference call where Elon Musk was talking about these um, moves in cryptocurrencies and he kind of, in answering a question about it, he tried to distract investors and tell them, hey, don't pay too much attention to this. Cryptocurrencies for us is just a sideshow to the sideshow is what Elon Musk said about their cryptocurrency activities. But, you know, uh, it must be nice where spending $1.5 billion on a sideshow to the sideshow, right? That's a lot of money to spend on a sideshow to the sideshow. All right, moving on here to the overview of the company where they talk about what they do and they design, develop, manufacture, and sell high performance, fully electric vehicles and design, manufacture, install, and sell solar energy generation and energy storage products. That's what they do. That's what they're in the business of doing. And in that regard, they have done an excellent job. They've scaled their performance, improved production, expanded capacity, increased their operating profit margins and gross profit margins while also increasing the top line. All of that solid performance over the years from Tesla. Another interesting note here is they discuss the impact of inflation on the business. They experience and, not, and are experiencing varying levels of inflation in part from supply chain disruptions, increased shipping and transportation costs, increase in raw material prices, labor costs and other disruptions caused by the pandemic so they are experiencing inflation and we saw that when we looked at their total cost of goods we saw when it rose by three billion dollars and that's impacting their business impacting their profit margins to counter this these trends tesla has increased prices on their cars in the hopes of keeping their profit margins intact and so this is something that investors need to keep an eye on for tesla 
because costs are rising and it's not certain they're going to be able to increase their prices on their cars because remember Tesla's cars are already expensive right they're already pricey and if they're going to add you know another five to ten percent on top of those prices that could cause some customers to say okay you know what that's too rich for my blood I'm not going to buy it I'll wait or maybe I'll buy a different electric car or maybe I'll just buy an uh, an ICE car instead of buying a Tesla because it's just so darn expensive. I noted earlier that Tesla sold a lot of its cryptocurrencies and here there's a note in the financial statement that goes into more detail about it and says as of June 30th 2022 we have converted approximately 75 percent of our purchases into fiat currency. So Tesla sold its Bitcoin and other cryptocurrency assets, turned it into cash, and they kept, uh, you know, that was about 75% of their cryptocurrencies. In its conference call, Elon Musk went to great lengths to say that this isn't an, any indi indication of my feeling about cryptocurrency and its future prospects or its valuation prospects but actually the reason why we sold it was because there was uncertainty in China regarding shutdowns and COVID related disruptions and so we sold our cryptocurrencies to make sure that we had you know more cash available just in case but you know I would push back on that point made by Elon Musk and say that they had over 13 billion in cash on hand already and so they raised about 900 million selling the cryptocurrencies. I don't know how much of a factor that was going to play in helping solidify its cash balance. They already had 13 billion. So maybe maybe it is an indication of what they feel about cryptocurrencies and its valuation and its prospects and its volatility right because the prices fluctuate so much as a company you may not want to hold that as your asset on your balance sheet because the price fluctuates so much you want to hold something that holds its value more robustly than maybe cryptocurrencies whose prices fluctuate up and down so violently Another interesting segment in their financial statement where the note six and they talk about inventory. We highlighted that their inventory was up to 8.1 billion up from 5.7 billion in December 31. And if you look more closely, they break it. They break their inventory down into four segments, raw materials, work in process, finished goods and service parts. And you notice the biggest increase is in raw materials to 4.9 billion from 2.8 billion and this partly is likely resulting from the supply chain shortages that came about during covid companies needed to secure the inventories that they wanted ahead of time and they needed to pay higher prices for it and this could be what tesla had to do to make sure that it had the materials it needed to make the cars and so it ordered in advance to make sure it has these inventories um, this, this, you know, it could be a risk, although Tesla and Elon Musk said recently that customer demand is not an issue, that they have a backlog of orders and people are waiting six months to a year to receive their cars. And so demand is not an issue. So there's little risk that they get stuck with the, with these inventories. Um, but that, that is something to keep in mind here. Because this is similar to what was going on at Peloton for the longest time. They kept saying how customer demand was not a problem. And every time inventories increased, they said that's that's okay because we need these items. Customer demand is robust. We don't want customers to wait so long. But, uh, you know, the economy is volatile right now. The Russian invasion of Ukraine is causing all kinds of disruptions in Europe. The rising inflation is causing consumer budgets to decrease. And so all of a sudden, customer demand for Tesla's cars could decrease and they could be stuck with billions of inventory and unwanted uh, vehicles and that are sitting on the lot that they're going to need to discount to get rid of. Again, I will reiterate, that's not a problem right now, but it could be a few months down the road 
or six months down the road, there is a potential of this becoming a troublesome issue. But for now, they're okay. Customer demand is robust. This is also interesting. I found uh, the te Tesla gave the CEO, which is Elon Musk, a performance award. And the performance award is judged on total annual annualized revenue and annualized adjusted EBITDA, which stands for earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization. And so with each milestone that Tesla hits, the CEO, Elon Musk, will get a massive bonus with this regard. And already he, he has achieved one, two, three of the bonuses with the uh, fourth one as being probable, the EBITDA portion already hit and the revenue portion is also probable. Um, I, I, You know, I like when CEO pay payment is tied to performance. The only thing I would have liked to have seen is the performance tied to a less adjusted figure. EBITDA is already an adjustment to operating income. And so adjusting an already adjusted figure, um, I would have preferred just to be tied to e uh, either EBITDA or operating income without adding an extra layer of adjustment. But just getting picky there. Overall, it's nice to see CEOs pay salary connected to company performance. Because when shareholders get rich, the CEO gets rich, right? And, and you like to see that connection between shareholder wealth and CEO wealth. All right, I will end here on this page, but I will discuss this page before we finish here. And this is um, Tesla's breakdown of its manufacturing, its capacity, its product development. And, you know, for the most part, for the last few years, the discussion around Tesla has been in on the supply side because customer demand has been so incredibly high. People are waiting six months to a year to receive Tesla's products. They're ordering ahead of time. There's so much ordering. There's so much demand that Tesla is hardly keeping up. And so, so much of the discussion has just been on supply. Can you ramp up supply? Can you make more of these cars at a low enough price to meet these customer orders so that you can make these sales because customers want your product? And so all you got to do is, is be able to make your products uh, efficiently enough to sell them because customers want your thing. So here's a breakdown between Teslas. And, and most recently, you know, it's adding... Uh, manufacturing plants it started the Fremont factory was the first factory that's where it produced the Model S the Model X the more expensive models of its cars and then it, it expanded to Model 3 and Model Y which were less expensive more entry version prices and that you know it it appeals to a wider audience because of lower prices and recently they begun production production of the Model 3 and Model Y in Shanghai, China, which is helping in two regards, right? Number one, it's helping boost output. And number two, the fact that it's able to produce in uh, another part of the world where also uh, Tesla delivers, you know, uh, billions of dollars in sales in China. So to be able to have a manufacturing facility in China to where it could supply customers in China, that lowers its its uh, delivery cost as well. So that helps both sides of the equation. And similarly, they're expanding in Berlin, Brandenburg, and they're making their Model Ys over there. So that, that should help distribution in Europe as this facility ramps up. And then they're also expanding in Texas with the Model Y production over there. And so, and so again, this in, in, increases capacity, but also lowers distribution costs. Fremont, the Fremont factories all the way in the West Coast in California. And so if they have sales in closer to the East Coast, now this is somewhere they can, you know, deliver from close nearby. 
but that's not all tesla's expanding into more models they're gonna start they're in development with the cyber truck they're planning on developing a, a semi truck a tesla roadster and then robo taxis and other further down the line of course the robo taxi is one of the main theses for investing in tesla because if it gets it the automated driving driverless technology to a point where it can unleash this fleet of robo taxis and generate revenue from that without having to pay drivers that could be a massive injection of revenue and profitability for the business and so many of tesla stock investors are looking forward to that and in one of the main reasons they're investing today is for the potential of the robo taxi uh, revenue and profits in the future all right so that's all i've got in my review of tesla stocks financial statement thank you for watching and tune in next time for the next series in reading financial statements thank you for watching i want to thank the motley fool for sponsoring this video the motley fool is a company that provides investing insight and stock recommendations for all investors of all skill sets and risk levels so I'm proud to partner with The Motley Fool to bring you 10 stock picks from their popular product, Stock Advisor. Stock Advisor has beaten the market by more than three times. Go to fool.com slash parkev to get your 10 stock picks now.